ho, ho, ho. This is Azula. Hey. She's purring. Don't let her fool you. She looks like she doesn't want to be here, but she does. Okay, bye. Hello everybody, it's Rega here at Wine Mermaids and welcome back to another edition of Top 5 Wednesday. Top 5 Wednesday was created by Lainey at Ginger Reads Lainey and you can find her, the links to her channel and the Goodreads group down in the description below as always. Um, so today's topic is actually a very serious topic and it's one that I'm really glad that it came up on Top 5 Wednesday. I talked about it, you know, we've been talking about it with Kayla Rain a little bit. Um, since my monthly recommendations video, I mentioned a book on there that kind of dealt with that and she and I are just have been chatting about the fact that it's something that's really important and then this week's Top 5 Wednesday, I was like really excited about it. Um, and that topic is our top five books with mental health or um, mental illness issues basically in it and there are a decent amount of these actually out there. Um, but they are really important because they kind of showcase a different style of life or a different thing um, and something that not a lot of people really know about or understand or appreciate and so sometimes books are really good about this because they kind of can get you into that perspective that you might not necessarily get and it brings attention to issues that need it. Um, and so that's really important and I'm really happy that this topic came about and I actually had a really hard time narrowing it down to just five so I didn't <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna share with you a couple of my favorite ones because I just feel like this is so important and the uh, they're kind of a diversity as far as like different types of illnesses and issues that I think are all important and so I just kind of wanted to bring attention to those even though it says just top five I just kind of some of these are really important um, so I just wanted to show all of them, basically. So let's get into it. Sorry for the like slightly downer note on that, but there you go. The first one I'm going to show you, I actually haven't read yet and I haven't even hauled it yet because I just got it. Um, and I haven't even seen the movie, but it is like, supposedly like one of the best books about mental health issues and mental, mental illnesses. And that is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by, um, Ken, Ke Ken Casey or Ken Kesey. And this one, it's, I mean, again, I, I haven't even read it yet, but I know that it's such a classic one that I just wanted to include it, even though I haven't read it yet. The other one I wanted to include it that's above the top five, um, so they're not really officially included, but I'm including them anyway, and that is Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. Again, this is one of my favorite books of all time, really, anyway, and um, it's not like, it deals with mental health issues, but not, it's not like clarified right away, and it's kind of like hidden ones in there, and he's just kind of, slightly depressed in there and he's got some like backstory issues that are kind of touchy um but it is such a great book and so I did want to throw it out even though I know it's probably going to be on a lot of people's lists now to the actual top five books not that I do a list in order because I don't like to rank things I don't know I don't know which ones are my favorites and which ones are not um but the first one I'm going to mention today is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath which is a classic book about uh, mental health issues. It's Sylvia Plath who again we I mean she suffered from a lot of these issues herself and this story is about um, this girl who goes to a mental health issue a mental health facility and is going through a lot of issues and ends up going through like shock therapy and it's just it's kind of crazy but it really does it's brilliant it opens up your eyes to that kind of world especially in that time period. Along with that one is similar to that is the Japanese um, version kind of in a way in its Norwegian wood by Haruki Murakami and it's about a boy who um, moves goes to college for the first time and kind of has his own issues but he falls in love with this girl from high school that he knew who ends up going to a mental um, institution but it's not like your traditional one it's very like relaxed and but it's his relationship with her and how there's a big like a, a divide between them because of that the next one I want to mention I mentioned in my monthly recommendations video and that is forgive me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick and this is the one that Kayla and I were kind of discussing about the other day and this is just this again it's the story of Leonard Peacock who trigger warning book by the way um, but he is planning to kill himself and so he has got some major mental issue mental health issues um, that he is dealing with in this book and it's brilliant and beautiful and heartbreaking and everybody should read it um, but also be wary of that trigger warning because it's really important it's a really important read though so yeah 
the next one is not a sad book um, at all, but it's The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon, and this one is just, it's the story of a boy with Asperger's, and you really get into his head, um, and that's something that it's really hard to kind of do as you're like, as you meet people who have Asperger's, who have autism, to kind of get inside their head is something that's really strange and amazing and beautiful, and so this book is just fantastic. Um, and I, not that like Asperger's or autism is something that is like, need crazy mental health, but it is, it's a, it's a, dis it's a disability. And so I, I wanted to include it just because it is really fantastic and it's a different perspective. Um, and, and everybody should read it basically, because it's really good. And finally, the last book I wanted to talk to you about today is Columbine by Dave Cullen. Um, and this book is basically the story behind the Columbine shooting that happened in the 90s. Um, and it really, but it goes into the depth of the story about what happened, but also the mental health disabilities that these two guys were dealing with. And um, it's just such an important read. And it, I mean, it's crazy and it's dark and it's twisted and to, it's incredibly sad and heartbreaking and emotional, especially for those who were alive during that time or who remember it or who are teachers and are dealing with this on a daily basis as they go to work. And like, it's such an important read um, that I wanted to include it because it's real. It's a real story, it's what happened, but not only does it talk about that, but it also talks about the media and how the media played a big part in this. Um, and I just think that it's a fantastic read, but I mean, again, it's, it's harrowing and it's like, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> And like nightmares sometimes might happen because of it but it does talk about those mental health issues but also what how other things can affect it and how it's put in a real world situation and it's scary and huh. so those are my top seven books about that deal with mental health issues and again I'm sorry this is a bit of a somber tone today but I feel I'm very passionate about this and I feel like these are such important um, issues and the topics to discuss and so I wanted to kind of have a, a, a variety of books to talk about today um, just to open up people's eyes to it so um, anyway let me know down below if you what your favorite um, books are or any books that you suggest that I did not mention um, f that fit this topic and um, you know I hope you're having a really great top five Wednesday and <laughs> we'll smile now let's be happy and go and and yeah Anyway, uh, that's it for me today. I'll see you next time.